think uh, in today's world, I think both Europe and India are actually not co countries or, or for that matter, a group of countries. Uh, these are two beautiful ideas in which how people, communities uh, of different races, caste, creed, religion come together and live together. India, for example, is one such country and there's a lot that one can learn from each other, I think. Uh, first of all, the diversity of India being a country of 1.2 billion people. What can it learn from Europe first? 28 countries in the European Union. You can cross the boundary of any nation state, the same currency, I think it's fascinating. We live in a world where borders are seizing. Whereas in India, borders are being erected. That's something that India can learn from Europe, that we got to live to work together and not segregate each other. And, and at this stage of present India, where minorities are a threat, this is a worry. And I hope my country, India, can learn from Europe, because India itself is not a nation, but actually, uh, like many call it, a subcontinent. What can Europe learn from India? I think um, in India, uh, people still have a spirit that a child doesn't have to ask permission to visit a parent. <laughs> I think uh, Europeans have become very individualistic. <laughs> Uh, it was uh, uh, shocking and surprising for me. You, know. <laughs> you still have to pay uh, when you're invited to someone else's birthday. <laughs> I think uh, Europe has to learn from India certain basic values of just being living together as humans, as people, <laughs> as communities. In India, you may be lost. In any village, you will find shelter, food, and a lot of love. In Europe, that might not be the case. <laughs> I want Europeans to learn that human warmth from India. Uh, India being a victim of European colonization. <laughs> so in terms of wealth, I think it's very relative. Your euro is stronger than the Indian rupee, no doubt, you know. But I think uh, we have to, in today's world, we have to learn to live in the spirit of cooperation and not showing who's high up and who's down there. I think we are all human beings. We eat at the same time. We like to sleep at the same time, probably. And just basic things of human life, living, two civilizations working together. I think this is what I would aspire. And I think as the world becomes more a global village, I think India and Europe must work together to ensure that is in principle um, respected, tolerated, appreciated, and respected. That's, that's what we feel. Usually people in India think Europeans are highly civilized <laughs> scientifically, culturally, the way your buildings are. And it's right too. But India too was known as a golden bird once upon a time. And I think Vasco da Gama came and actually started the process of discovering India. India was quite a wealthy India at the time as it was known, the concept of uh, India at that time. So in terms of, um, for me as a woman from India, it was quite shocking when I heard about that universal suffrage for women in Europe came quite late. Uh, in fact, a, a country in India, women got uh, you know, uh, voting rights much before many countries in Europe got. So I think, uh, yes, definitely, and there are uh, values which are attributed to European values which are good for women too, but then I think women in general, uh, have a lot that could sort of reinforce each other, both European as well as Indian women. And I think uh, in my own home state of Manipur, where we have more than 100 years of, of uh, historic movement, women's movement, where women came together to resist repression and um, forced labor, I think the spirit of women coming together uh, in, in, in India, uh, it is something that it's not new to Europe per se, but I think uh, what we're seeing is this, I don't see much difference actually in status of women in India and Europe, except that in, in Europe, you don't kill your women. Uh, you don't kill the girl child in the mother's womb. In India, we still do. Uh, 
European women take their husband's name after uh, uh, marriage. They also do in India. But unlike Indian women who go and stay in a husband's house and the family, uh, European women don't do that. So as I said, um, in terms of what do we learn from each other, it's just, I think, we have to listen to each other's stories because stories are quite similar. I don't think European women are much more advanced than women in India. It's just that women in India have been suppressed to such an extent through caste, through creed, uh, in many ways of, uh, uh, of um, repression has been greater because of Indian caste system, which is the biggest blot in, in, in an equal India. So that, thankfully, Europe didn't have. Uh, we have more than 50% women in the Norwegian uh, uh, parliament, that's what I understand. And I think here in, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in Italy too, you're getting almost close to 40%. It's a very good science, which women in India have to learn, because where Italy is at 40%, India is at 13%. So yes, in terms of historicity, same. But in terms of leveraging that, I think European women have done uh, well thanks to supportive men, <laughs> European men. And I think our, our men still have to learn to do that to women in India. That's the, the, I do, uh, that's the challenge that we have. And Indian women are equally strong and beautiful as European women. And if given the equal opportunity, they will equally shine as women from Europe or any other part of the world. <laughs>